Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. Same old Joe. That's the subject of tonight's Waters Words. New Year, same Biden. The president's first year is officially over, and so is the rest of his presidency. The guy's damaged goods. 58% of Americans disapprove of him, and Democrats want to primary him. AOC's former communications director went off to Politico about how unpopular an old Joe is. Not very nice. He said, quote, he's deeply unpopular. He's old as blank. He's largely been ineffective, unless we're counting judges or whatever the hell inside baseball scorecard we're using. And I think he'll probably get demolished in the midterms. Even Bernie's campaign manager says there's no doubt Biden's on the road to facing a progressive primary challenger. So incumbent presidents who face serious primary challenges or serious third party challengers always lose the general. Just ask Jimmy Carter and Bush 41. Nancy Pelosi is telling donors that Democrats need to be more boastful about his accomplishments. <laughs> and what would those be? Nothing comes to mind. And his party civil wars raging as some Democrats slouch and just shake their heads for heading too far left. Remember MSNBC host Chris Matthews? He tweeted, I tried to warn we were headed too far left. Even Crooked says the squad's flying a kamikaze mission. I think that it, it is um, a time for uh, some you know, careful thinking about what wins elections, and not just in deep blue districts where a Democrat and a liberal Democrat or so-called progressive Democrat is going to win. I understand why people want to argue for their priorities. That's what they believe they were elected to do. But at the end of the day, nothing is going to get done if you don't have a Democratic majority in the House and the Senate. Joe's parties at each other's throats while COVID surged back in a very big way. He should have known a winter wave was coming, but he got caught flat footed. The U.S. breaking a record number of COVID cases this week with over one million new infections in one day. Airlines canceling thousands of flights, workers calling out, folks getting crazy, feeling fine but standing in line for hours to get tested, and then calling in sick for a week at least. It's an absolute mess. The December jobs report was another big miss. Economists expected over 400,000 jobs created, but the number came in at only 199,000. Sounds like an easy job to be an economist. You get paid to be wrong. Also paid to be wrong, Joe Biden. Republicans say today that uh, my talking about this strong record shows that I don't understand. I don't understand. A lot of people are still suffering, they say. Well, they are. Or that I'm not focused on inflation. Malarkey. Skyrocketing inflation hurting all Americans. Prices surging to 40-year highs. And something that I care deeply about, beef. Prices up 20% from last year. Biden, he just found out, though. I was sitting in my kitchen yesterday, and there's a sunroom off the kitchen, and my wife was there with her sister and a good friend named Mary Ann, and she was saying, do you realize it's over $5 for a pound of hamburger meat? $5? Well, this is partly, you know, the pound of beef today costs 5 bucks compared to less than 4 bucks before the pandemic. You see, Biden's just figuring this out because he really doesn't get enough time to think, even with all his days off. I know the president doesn't have public events today. He does have a number of uh, meetings with uh, policy teams, uh, and that's often what he's doing behind the scenes. If you if he were standing here today, which I know he's always invited, is what you guys will say, but he would say we never give him any free time or any time to think, um, and that is probably true. Biden has a lighter schedule than Reagan. And Reagan was shot in the chest his first year. But then again, Biden doesn't even know what year it is. There's a lot of reason to be hopeful in 2020. But for God's sake, please take advantage of what's available. <sighs> Build Back Better's dead. Illegal immigration, inflation, COVID and crime, smashing records. The Democrat base fractured. And Biden's vax mandates are on the cusp of being smacked down by the Supreme Court. Joe has nowhere left to go. January 6th couldn't come soon enough. For the first time in our history, a president had not just lost an election, he tried to prevent the peaceful transfer of power 
as a violent mob breached the Capitol. While some courageous men and women in the Republican Party are standing against it, trying to uphold the principle of that party, too many others are transforming that party into something else. Does calling him out divide more than it heals? Look, the way you have to heal, you have to recognize the extent of the wound. You can't pretend. The media went wild, declaring this a turning point in Biden's presidency, the best speech of Biden's life. Are they sure he didn't plagiarize it? They'll never tell you. But making January 6th a federal holiday and resurrecting the big bad wolf, Donald Trump, won't save the Democrats from disaster in the midterms and beyond. The Democratic Party, as we know it, is on its last legs. They've been discredited. They're losing whites, blacks, and Hispanics by the boatload mostly because of their clear insanity and incompetence. Americans have gotten an up-close and personal look at the Democrats in complete control of government. And it's a truly revolting scene. How revolting? Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.